me to recognize the presence of Air Vice Marshal Alam Retired, one of the pioneer Nigerian Air Force officers. Please, let's put our hands together for Air Vice Marshal Alam. You're welcome, sir. I'm told that the senior officer was enlisted into the Nigerian Air Force in 1963 or thereabouts. Once again, a round of applause. Thank you, sir. We also have in our midst branch chiefs. From my angle of sight, I can see the chief of training and operations, Air Vice Marshal AAEA. Also, may I recognize the presence of the Chief of Standards and Evaluation, Air Vice Marshal SS Balariba. Also, in our midst, we have the Chief of Administration, Air Vice Marshal LS Alao. You're welcome, sir. May I also recognize the presence of uh, the Chief of Aircraft Engineering, Air Vice Marshal OJ Osaho. You're welcome, sir. Also, in our midst, we have the Air Officer Commanding Logistics Command, Air Vice Marshal IJ Yaya, you're welcome, sir. Let me also recognize the PIMT Coordinator, Air Vice Marshal KG La, you're welcome, sir. The Air Officer Commanding Mobility Command is also in our midst, Air Vice Marshal SI Ono, you're welcome, sir. The Director of Policy is also in our midst. Air Vice Marshal Awomodu, you're welcome, sir. I will continue with more recognitions. Please permit me to recognize the presence of some of our very, very wonderful retired senior officers. We also have in our midst the Chief of Logistics, Chief of Com Logistics and Communication. Air Vice Marshal Adamu, you're welcome, sir. Also, the Air Secretary is in our midst, Air Vice Marshal Ahmed. Let me respectfully recognize the presence of uh, Air Vice Marshal T. D. Kirena Bere, retired. You're welcome, sir. Four of us, I can mention, uh, as I said, I'm the last one standing. But it comprised of Yusa Doko, who became a chief of air staff at one time. Air Commodore Falope, who we lost only last year. Minister of Defense and his colleagues in 1964. That's how, that's how the Air Force started. The four of us, I can mention, Distinguished invited guests, please permit me to recognize the presence in our midst of His Royal Highness, the Emir of Borgu, His Royal Highness, Barrister Al Haji Muhammad Sani Haliru Dantoro, the Kitoro, or Kitoro the Fort. You are welcome, Your Royal Highness. Also, in our midst, we are privileged to have a one time Chief of the Air Staff, a one time Chief of Defense Staff, Air Chief Marshal O.O. Petering. You are welcome, sir. Let me recognize the presence of a one time Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal John Femi. You are welcome, sir. May I? Recognize the presence in our midst of Air Vice Marshal SBE Berivia, retired. You're welcome, sir.
May I recognize the presence in our midst of retired Air Commodore Abiagum. You're welcome, sir. Also in our midst is retired Air Commodore T.T. Agbecha. You're welcome, sir. Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Abubakar. And a training command. You're welcome, sir. And a logistic command. That was from 1970 upwards. And we started getting organized properly. Command. Training command. Band. Yeah, we, we had only a training command and a strike command. During my time, then I introduced the logistics command. So we stood there. Today's occasion, the Chief of Defense Staff, General Gabriel Abayomi Olonishaki. You are welcome, sir. Inclusion into Nigeria by Chadian forces and armed rebels increased along the Nigerian border with Chad Republic. This resulted partly from prospects for oil exploration around the Lake Chad Basin and claims of ownership. The guest of honor, the Chief of Defense Staff, General Abayomi Gabriel Olonishaki. The former Chief of Defense Staff, Air Chief Marshal O.O. Kwetinri, retired. The former Chief of Air Staff, Air Vice Marshal Femi John Femi. The Director Air Force, Mrs. E. E. Osai Sai. Brand Chiefs. From Defense Headquarters and Headquarters Nigerian Air Force, Commandant of Tri Service and Nigerian Air Force Institutions, Air Officers Commanding, the Corps Marshal Road Safety, Federal Road Safety Corps, ably represented, Senior Officers Serving and Retired, Members of the Press, Distinguished Invited Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. May I, on behalf of the Planning Committee for the Nigerian Air Force Day celebration, welcome you all to the Kenev Range venue for the Air Weapons Meet. The Air Weapons Meet is one of the activities outlined for the 53rd Nigerian Air Force anniversary celebration. May I now hand you over to Wing Commander Henry Eze, to give you a description of the range, is it? Thank you, sir. The guest of honor, sir. Permit me to stand on existing protocols. At this point, sir, I would want to acquaint you with a description of the range. Slide. Okay, next slide. Next slide, please. Okay, sir, on the screen is a pictorial depiction of the range. Permit me to use the clock code in describing the range. Straight to your front as we are seated is at 12 o'clock. To your rear is 6 o'clock. 
Now, if you look straight to your front, 150 meters with a displacement of about five degrees left, you see a tree. I call it a lonely tree. Beside the tree are white structures extending from 150 back to our position here. This extended white structure is the foul line of the range. The foul line is the point before which no connect activity will be conducted by aircraft participating in the range. By kinetic activity, I mean weapon fire. Now to your 130, you see two pieces of cloth hung on stands. Those are called the strafe targets. These targets are used by combat aircraft for attack using cannons. In between both white cloth, you see a vehicle. Depicted on a screen, that vehicle is at the center of the bomb circle. The bomb circle consists of an inner and outer circle. The vehicles at the center of the bomb circle is called the bull's eye. Now we expect all aircraft coming to the range to come from our left and draw through our right. The extended white lines running from the bomb circle down to your 11 o'clock are called our running lines. These are the lines combat aircraft coming into the range are expected to follow for an attack either on the bomb circle or on the strafe targets, which are the white cloths. By the way, the bomb circle is used for bomb and rocket attacks. For today, we'll be seeing rocket and only cannon attacks. At this point, sir, permit me to introduce you to four targets at your 12.30 location. Those four targets are specially prepared for the side gun of our Augusta 109 helicopters who, who has a side gunner and fires from the side. So they also follow the standard pattern of the range thereafter position to fire these four targets. Before we proceed, I want to invite the range safety officer, squadron leader, IB Topman, to give us the range safety rules. Slide. Thank you, sir. Permit me to stand on the existing protocol. The following are the range safety rules. Pilot have to abide during the course of this activity. Firstly, it is mandatory for all pilots to make two-way communication with range control tower. Secondly, no pilot has to pass gun sight through any building, aircraft, or RSU unit, that is runway supervisory unit. No double bust. Pilots are not allowed to do last minute correction why coming to engage the target? Pilots are not allowed to fire when coming to engage the target after the running line. Pilots are not allowed to do any roll-up during the course of these range activities. 
And finally, pilot are to avoid target fixation. However, for our spectators here present, you look to our left and right. We have a red and white tape. Please, for safety reason, you are not allowed to cross this line. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Squadron Leader Topman. Uh, at this uh, point, I will want to introduce the range controllers we have here in to the audience. We have uh, Wing Commander Shobayo as the range controller, and he'll be assisted, assisted by the range safety officer, Squadron Leader, of various helicopters that have the capability to perform combat functions. We have the MI-24, the MI-35, and the MI-17. However, due to service exigencies, these other platforms would not be participating in the meet this morning. You may wish to know that the MI-24 and the MI-35 have front-facing guns and have the capability to carry out frontal attacks. For the Augusta, however, it is a side dog gunner attack it is able to perform. Another of our platforms that performs the side gunner attack role is the EC-135 and the Super Puma. I tell you, these platforms have played a very pivotal role in controlling and keeping oil bunkering under check in the South-South region. Also, in the Northeast, these platforms, the Super Puma and the Augusta especially, carry out combat support roles which go a long way in ensuring mission accomplishment. Stand by at this point, the Falcon is coming in for a space pass. Here comes the Augusta for the Spacer Pass. A round of applause for that machine. The Spacer Pass enables the pilot to position properly, acquire the target, and then come in for an attack. The range is used to sharpen the pilot's firing skills. And it's expected that if you can master it here, doing it out there won't be a problem. However, please note that in real combat situations, you do not present yourself for speed tapas. You attack and leave the area. The Augusta is coming in now for the side gun attack on the four targets to your 
That was the Augusta taking out identified targets. Now they are coming in for a second pass to ensure a complete destruction of their target. Now the Augusta comes in for a second attack on his designated target. That was the Agusta in a display of side gunner attack on targets. Please, let's give another round of applause to those pilots. The captain of that ship is Wing Commander A.A. Komalafe. He's an instructor pilot with the Nigerian Air Force. And he is assisted by squadron leader I.P. Godwin. We also have with them two gunners who are trained in the employment of the Augusta for combat missions. Sergeant Animba is the senior gunner and last copper Ishaku is the second gunner. Any moment from now, we're gonna be seeing the L-39 aircraft coming in for its range pass. The L-39 is coming in with the call sign Cobra Formation. L-39 who first come in for a space pass at 300 knots. Thereafter, the opposition for attacks with the cannon and rockets. They will also carry out three passes for rockets at a speed of 270 to 300 knots. They are employing a 30 degrees dive angle. We expect the Cobra formation to make a total of nine passes. For an introduction of the Cobras, we have two L-39 ZA. First is NAV-367, and the other is NAV-373. In NAV-367, front cockpit pilot, and the one doing the firing, is squadron leader G. Midawa. At his rear, as a supporting pilot, is flight lieutenant U.S. Brown. For NAV-373, we have squadron leader Jay Obadan as the front cockpit pilot and squadron leader 
A, Onalaja, as the supporting pilot. Here comes the Cobras. As you can see, the spacer pass is also used to give separation between a formation of aircraft. The Cobra formation has broken into Cobra lead and Cobra II at this time. If you look overhead the, uh, the range, we have clouds forming. <laughs> clouds are always an issue for combat aircraft, in fact, for general aircraft operations. However, the pilots we have in these aircraft today are well trained and versed in the art of achieving the desired mission despite challenges. Okay, that was a simulated cannon attack by the Cobra lead. Shortly behind is Cobra 2. Now the Cobras have, are through the simulated gun passes and coming in for live rocket deliveries. They are expected to make three passes on the rocket delivery. The L39Z is a fighter training aircraft that has the ability for combat engagements. Now we have the Cobra lead and finals and anyone from now it should appear for rocket. That was a very good hit by the Cobra lead in the inner circle. Please, a round of applause for Cobra lead. Now have number two in for rocket pass. Yeah. 
That was another good hit. Six o'clock to the bull's eye. The rocket. By a Okay, in a fighter balance, we call that a hit within the desired main point of impact, DMPI. You don't want to be standing in that circle when such a pass is made. That was a strike by the corporate lead. That was a strike, 6 o'clock, uh, less than 30 feet from the bull's eye. These rockets have a desired uh, a fragmentation envelope. Once there's an explosion from the rocket, it uh, goes up to 25 meters from the point of impact. Anything within that radius stands that risk of being completely destroyed. So far, Cobra Formation have been able to get their ammunition into the bomb circle. We have one of the heats right at the bull point by the Cobra lead. That was a total annihilation by the Cobra II. Complete annihilation of enemy forces at the target area. Please, let's give a big round of applause to the Cobra Formation for that effort. Now we have the Alpha Jets coming in with the call sign Aggressor, Aggressor 06. Cobras and aggressors 
have been deployed in the Northeast in the ongoing battle against insurgency and the South-South against militancy. They have both performed very, very well in their employment. Shortly, we'll see the Alpha Jet in for a space pass. That's the Alpha Jet. This aircraft has been flown by many of our very distinguished guests here today. The veteran whose name always rings with the alphabet is our own dear Skipper Joe, retired Air Commodore Okoye. Also, is our own very retired boss, popularly known as OK Juju. We, the younger generation, call him in the bucket. <laughs> retired VM Okalawo. Well done, sir. Now the upper jet will come in for cannon pass. Straf on the target. Now the aggressor is coming in for his trap on the left target. That was through the target immediately, a bullseye through the strap target by the aggressors. I tell you, a lot of militants, insurgents, and those dissidents have felt the heat of the alpha jet and its cannons. Well done, aggressors. This same machine you see doing this today has made its name both within the country and the region. This machine was flown by the veterans whom I named and others here in Liberia and Sierra Leone. In fact, the Alpha Jet has a nickname, which is the Dudu Bed, called it by the Liberians because of the way he appears, hits them by surprise, and before they know it, they are all dead. Also, in Syria alone, it was known as Pi Alpha. The machine is presently showing what it's worth. 
in the Northeast by controlling and keeping insurgency under check. Now the aggressors for rocket attack. That's two shots within the DMPI and one slightly to the bull, all within the fragmentation envelope of the rockets. A good hit by the aggressors. Please, a round of applause. In the Alpha Jet now 461, we have the front cockpit pilot, flight lieutenant S.A. Hastrop, and the supporting pilot, flying officer F. Oga. Now the aggressor is positioning for a rocket attack on the target. The aggressor is meant to make three rocket passes, and this is the second pass. Wow. Shots within the bomb circle boobs eye by the aggressors. A round of applause for the aggressors. Now we expect a salvo pass by the aggressors for a complete destruction of the target. That is Sabo short. Please a round of applause for the aggressors for that Sabo pass. Now the aggressors are coming after destroying the targets. I'm going to give you a victory roll over the targets.
Okay, the aggressors are coming in a victory roll and no release of live ordinance just to impress it upon the enemy that the NAV will be The Also congratulate the entire Air Force family on the occasion of the 53rd anniversary of the Nigerian Air Force. I wish to express my satisfaction as the Chief of the Defense Staff at the Nigerian Air Force Air Power demonstration that we have just witnessed. Recall that last month, we were at Sambisa Forest for the Nigerian Army Small Arms Championship, where we witnessed excellent marksmanship displayed by our Nigerian Army colleagues. Today, I am proud to declare that the Nigerian Air Force has lived up to expectations. The sequencing, airmanship, and accurate delivery of firepower from the various platforms that participated at the air weapons meet are highly commendable. What we have witnessed is a demonstration of what happens during air interdiction, ground attack, and close air support missions that our pilots conduct frequently in the ongoing counterterrorism and counterinsurgency operations. Presently, we can boast of an air force that can deliver appropriate firepower at the right time and at the right place of our own choosing. I want to use this opportunity to commend the Chief of the Air Staff for his commitment to improving the capacity of the Nigerian Air Force, including capacity development of his officers and men. I urge you to keep it up. Overall, we have witnessed a tremendous improvement in the capacity of the Nigerian Air Force to carry out our constitutional responsibilities of defending the territorial integrity of a united Nigeria by land, sea, and air. I want to use this opportunity to once again thank the President, Commander-in-Chief, President Muhammad Buhari for his pragmatic and exemplary leadership, not only to the armed forces, but also the entire country. As members of the armed forces, we reaffirm our loyalty to the President, Commander-in-Chief, and our commitment in the performance of our constitutional responsibility. Once again, I congratulate the Nigerian Air Force for attaining 53 years of selfless service to the country. I thank you all and God bless. May I request we give the guests of honor another round of applause for those very kind words. Thank you, sir. Next on the program, The next item on the program before departure is the vote of thanks. Accordingly, it is my honor and privilege to respectfully invite the Chief of Training and Operations Headquarters Nigerian Air Force, Air Vice Marshal A.A. Iya, to give a vote of thanks. The seat up, sir. Thank you very much. The guest of honor, sir. 
all protocols duly and respectfully observed. I want to sir, uh, first of all say a few words about the appearance of the L39 in this uh, activity. Uh, due to the challenges the Nigerian Air Force is facing in terms of maintaining the Alpha Jets and also inducting new platforms, the Chief of Air Staff decided to have a plan B in case uh, the situation becomes unbearable. That is why the L-39s have now been armed and we can see that they can perform the functions that they, uh, we require them to perform to fill the gap when the need arises. The aircraft after this uh, event will return to Kano and continue the um, pilot training until it is required. That is the focus of the Chief of Air Staff. We thank him very much. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Almighty God for having successfully completed this weapons exercise. We thank the guest of honor for honoring our invitation the Royal Highness, the Emir of Borgu, we also thank you very much for personally honoring our invitation. We are most honored. We, I want to express our gratitude to our former CDS and former service chief and all the highly respected retired senior officers, some of, of, some of them are our mentors for gracing this uh, very important occasion. I want to thank the Chief of Air Staff once more for making it possible for this uh, exercise to hold successfully despite very tight challenges. As we speak, the Northeast is also covered. We have not left it uh, empty. There are aircraft on standby in case of any emergency in the Northeast, despite this exercise. We thank you very much, sir, for this uh, leadership. To all our invited guests, thank you for honoring our invitation and for putting up with the Makodi heat. Our organizers, we thank you for, uh, for all the efforts, for all the efforts you have put in or since we started uh, this exercise, and to see to the uh, we, have, we are coming to the end of the exercise successfully, and uh, we have seen that uh, you have done very well. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming. Uh, we will see you again uh, in the evening at the gala night. Thank you, and God bless. Let's appreciate the chief of training and operations with another round of applause. That vote of thanks brings us to the formal end of this morning's proceeding. May I once again inform the August gathering that there will be a gala night this evening strictly by invitation at the Nigerian Air Force Officers Mess in the NAV base. May I please request we rise for the fanfare, the band. Very distinguished invited guests, once again, we thank you all for being a part of this occasion. We look forward to seeing you later in the evening. I had been the master of ceremony, group captain Ernest Bassi, and uh, I've been working with 
Wing Commander Henry Eze, and Squadron Leader Topman. We wish you a safe journey back to your respective destinations. Thank you. Concerning what we just witnessed, I'm really impressed by what I've seen. And of course, the ASS is to sharpen their skills. And as they sharpen their skills, this will reflect in our operations, in the subsequent operations, and in our present operations we are having. In the northeast and other operations we are having. Thank you. Thank you. that I also commend all they have been doing. This is not just the first time. They have they have done so many uh, research, uh, committed on research efforts and uh, based on good development. I commend them. And of course, in that light, like I said, um, we continue to encourage all the services to engage in research and development so that they can improve on their performances in the field. Um, like I said, um, they have attained 23 years, and of course, in, in the 23 years, they have done quite well in the performance of uh, their duty, both within the country and outside the country. And they continue to do much more, and we wish them more successful years as they defend the nation. I think what is important is for us to realize that our desire is to keep training and retraining so that we so that Nigeria will have a very professional air force. And that is the essence of what we saw this afternoon. And in terms of the Northeast, like you know, we have been there, we continue to be there, and our desire is to make sure that we have a stable environment, a secured environment where people can pursue their and we are working around the globe to ensure that uh, you know, we sustain the relative peace that we are seeing in the Northeast and other parts. That's part of the training. Our desire, like I said, is to improve on capacity uh, the building and make sure that we have professionals that can deliver you know, at the time that they are required to deliver and uh, do it professionally. And that's exactly what this mission uh, we commit is all about. Thank you very much.